Ah, oh, finally, the last film of this series, going out with none other than an Akira Kurosawa film. One of my all-time favorite directors, and someone that I will eventually watch all of his films. Mark my words. Kagimusha can now be checked off that list. Every Criterion sale, I go out of my way to make sure I come home with like at least one Kurosawa film that I haven't seen before. Kagimusha was one or two sales ago, I can't really remember at this point, but Kurosawa is a master at his craft and revolutionarily ahead of his time. Films like Seven Samurai, The Hidden Fortress, and Akiru have rippled throughout film history inspiring many films and directors we love today. His films tend to feel timeless and classic at the same time, Kagimusha is no different. The film follows a thief who looks an awful lot like the Lord of the Clan, so he's hired to be a body double for the Lord. But when the Lord dies, the thief takes over the role of the Lord. While a whole council kind of counselor, he's just a figurehead, he's just like a face for this council. The thief must follow into his role without being found out. And for a three hour film, this one flies by. The characters and the premise of the story is just so excellent. Everything is just so well developed in the three hour runtime. Visually, as always with Kurosawa, it's just stunning. A lot of a Kurosawa I've seen is normally in black and white, and I've not seen very much of his stuff in color yet, but he uses a color so brilliant brilliantly to give some truly striking imagery and a vibrant array of wardrobe. It's just gorgeous. His films are some of my favorite shot in terms of visuals. That's why I love him so much. There's one weird thing though I did notice. There's a random jump cut for seemingly no reason. I don't know if this was an issue with the Criterion release or just some random spot in the film. I don't recall seeing any other jump cuts in the film, so I'm just pointing this out. It's something that did take me out of the experience. Another thing I noticed was the sound design. Personally, I thought the sound design was rather bad in this one. There was moments large groups of soldiers would be marching, but they made no sound for dialogue to come through. The guns used in the film felt like they had three stock gun sound effects and they just reused them over and over and over and over again. There was also many times in the film that I felt like the Foley just wasn't even there. Normally used Foley to develop the world, to make the world feel lived in and just wasn't the case here. Things that should have made a noise just didn't. To see how carefully crafted a lot of this film was, and the films of Kurosawa I've seen, this was just strange to see such a lack in sound direction. It's definitely not something that ruins the film because all the dialogue does come through clear and good, but it's something I noticed and it kept bringing me out of the experience. Still with Kagimusha, Kurosawa proves he is a master even in the later stages of his career. This one to me is an 8.5 out of 10. So I figured since we made it through 31 movies in 31 days, I would pick the top five of my list. Not going into much detail over them, just watch their individual videos instead. But it was actually really hard to pick only five. There were a lot of films I watched in this series that I really enjoyed and would really recommend, but I had to narrow down a top five. So this would be my top five. Number five, Metropolis 2001. Number four, Butt Boy. Number three, Kagimusha. Number two, Writers of Justice in number one, drum roll please. 13 Assassins. This was just a really, really fun series to make, and I might make this into maybe a yearly thing, who knows? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I hope I may have introduced you to some movies that uh, you're willing to check out and may end up loving. I just had a great time with this. Have a good one. Peace.